seen in a while as Pastor John comes up. Please stand. Uh, so good to see you guys. I want you guys to open your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. I'm going to start reading from verse 1 through 5. This is 1 through 5. Exodus chapter Verses 1 through 5. If you have the ES Bible, let us read all together. Now Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro, and priest of Midian. And he led his flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. He looked, and behold, the bush was burning, yet it was not consumed. Moses said, I will turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. When the Lord saw that he, he turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Do not come near. Take your sandals off, your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. Amen. I'd like to share a message titled Encountering God. Uh, this is, uh, you know, today and uh, next week we're going to talk about that. Because I truly believe that encountering God is a very, very important thing. And as Moses was encountering God, you know, in, in our life too, we need to encounter God in our life. Um, you know, w- one of the important things is this, that if we don't encounter God, then you know what? Sometimes our Christian life can be just an idea or information in our head, you know, and it's not a reality. You see what I'm saying? So that is why I truly believe encountering God is very, very important for three reasons. First one is that you can give true worship to God. If you're encountering God, if you understand His presence in your life, then you know what? We can encounter Him. And not only that, we can give a true worship. Amen? You know, I sometimes, you know, visit different churches. But some, some churches, I'm sorry to say, they don't have the presence of God. I don't feel any presence of God in that place. Then you know what? I cannot truly worship. Whom are we worshiping? You see what I'm saying? If there is no presence of God. So that is why having the presence of God in our life, even in our personal worship too, we have to understand the presence of the Lord in our life then you know what? We can truly worship Him, even in our personal time. You see what I'm saying? When we're worshiping God, honoring God, then you know what? We have to understand His presence. We need to encounter His presence in our life. So that is why I truly believe it is very, very important. So true worship, because only we can give true worship when we are encountering His presence in our life, because He becomes real in our life. The second thing is that what I talked about is that, you know what? Your Christian life becomes real. You see what I'm saying? When you understand the presence of God in your life, then you know what? Your Christian life becomes real. You see what I'm saying? That you can worship God, honor God, and God is not just the information inside your head. That you know what? He's a living and active, and sometimes when you speak and He speaks to you, and then things like that, all this communication and fellowship exists. So that is why it's very, very important to encounter God. You know, so that is why, you know, I want you guys to really encounter God because it will make your Christian life real. You see what I'm saying? And that He's always with you. And when you call for help, He comes and helps you. You see what I'm saying? You know, and you begin to experience those kind of things, you know, the salvation of God, you know, or, or the things that He does in your life. So He sometimes shows you favor or grace, you know, in your life. We need to experience those kind of things. You see what I'm saying? Then your Christian life becomes real. You know, God is not just an idea inside your head. But, you know, what? He becomes real in your life. Amen? A lot of people just sometimes come to church and then you know what they encounter God but you know what it, it more than that we need to encounter God every day you see what I'm saying you know in our life where will we go because we have the presence of God in our life you see what I'm saying then you know it becomes real you see what I'm saying some people you know I see like you know gatherings and you know there's a move of God and things like that but you know what more important than that is that you know what there's a move of God in my personal life too so every day there's a move of God in my life you know and experiencing those things and I guarantee you if you begin to understand God's help and God's favor in your life every day, then you know what, what happens is that whatever you go through in your life, you can overcome it. Amen? Because, you know, because the presence of the Lord is there, and then, you know what, He will help you, and then, you know what, He will push you so that you can overcome the things that comes in your way. And whatever is opposing you in your life right now, 
you know, you can overcome those things. So that is why the presence of God is so strong. We need to encounter Him in our life. Third reason that we need to encounter God is that it's for the vision. You see what I'm saying? When God encountered Moses, God gave him a vision and a calling. You see what I'm saying? And then you should go back to Egypt and, you know, deliver Israelites out of Egyptians' hands. So that is the calling that God has received. Sometimes when we truly encounter God, then God starts speaking to us. God begins to, you know, reveal you know, his plan and his vision, you know, for our life. You see what I'm saying? You know, vision and dream, we've been talking about that, but it is not something that we make up. You see what I'm saying? It's not our desire or passion. You see what I'm saying? It's more of God is the one who gives you that vision and that dream. You see what I'm saying? So when we receive that, then you know what? We can fulfill those things. You you see what I'm saying? So I always say to people, receive the vision and the dream that God gives you. Why? Because that's when God begins to start working in your life. You see what I'm saying? God, God wants to do something through you. You see what I'm saying? In your life. You see what I'm saying? Now you have a purpose. You have a plan. And then you know what? God is calling you to do it. You know? So that is why it's very, very important. When you want to receive that, then you know what? That vision and dream doesn't go away. You see what I'm saying? It stays in your heart. And then you know what? You can fulfill the work of God in your life. So that is why encountering God is a very, very important thing in our life. So, you know, we must encounter God. You see what I'm saying? You know, encountering God is, is, is an everyday thing. And also, when you encounter God, you know, everything becomes so wonderful because God's presence is always with you. So that is why I truly believe encountering the Lord is very, very important. You know, it, it, you know all my life, sometimes like I, I see a lot of people say, it's hard to meet God. Or sometimes I hear people say, I call on God, but He doesn't answer. Or, you know, you see what I'm saying? Sometimes I hear all these experiences. You see what I'm saying? In my life too, in my Christian walk with God, sometimes, you know, I felt those things. You see what I'm saying? You know, sometimes I call upon, you know, and then He doesn't answer. He's just silent. You see what I'm saying? Heaven is completely silent. And things like that. We experience those kind of things. You see what I'm saying? But you know what? Later on, I realized, you see what I'm saying? As I was growing older as a Christian and becoming mature as a Christian, one of the things that I realized is that encountering God is very easy. You see what I'm saying? God did not make it hard. That's one thing that I realized. Why? Because God wants to meet us. You see what I'm saying? And He wants to speak to us. You know? That is the thing. You know? Then how come so many people do not encounter God? You see what I'm saying? Maybe they could encounter God in a meeting and things like that. But how come they do not encounter God in every day of life? You see what I'm saying? Every moment. Why? Because God wants to speak. God wants to be with you. You see what I'm saying? You know? You know? He wants to show himself. He wants to manifest himself. You see what I'm saying? You know, we always say that God is a loving God. You see what I'm saying? Then God is the one who wants to spend time with us. Amen? Isn't that true? You know, more than we want to spend time with him, God wants to spend time with us. You see what I'm saying? And God wants to reveal himself to us. Do you see what I'm saying? And he wants to... You know, speak things, his plan, his, his ideas, his mindset, his heart. And he want to share that with you. And I truly believe that, you know. But the problem is, then, is with us sometimes. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes we don't know how to go about it or we misunderstand, you know, about what does it mean to really encounter the Lord. You see what I'm saying, you know. So that is why, you know, there's a certain hindrance of encountering God. But one of the things that I realized that we can't encounter God every day. We can have His presence and walk with Him every day. You know, I'm sometimes surprised when I read the Bible. You know, the person Enoch, you remember him? You know, when he was 65, he started walking with God. And next 300 years, he walked with God every day. Wow. Next 300 years, you know, he encountered God. And then he, he was just living in His presence. You see what I'm saying? You know, and walking with Him, talking with Him, and things like that, you know. And I said that, wow, you know, I want to live that life. Sometimes, you know, we say, sometimes even even hard to, you know, walk one day with Him. You see what I'm saying? But He did that every day for 300 years. Can you imagine that, you know? And then, you know what? So He was living in such a heavenly life that God took Him away. You see what I'm saying? He never experienced that, you know? Because He was such a, had a, such an intimacy and such a relationship with God that, you know, God just took Him. You don't belong in this world, you know? I want to take you, you know? And then, you know, he was in heaven, you know. That's what happened to Enoch, you know. So one of the things that I realized, that, you know, we need to encounter God. You see what I'm saying in our life? It's so important in our life. But you know what? It's not a hard thing. You see what I'm saying? It's an easy thing. But sometimes we miss certain things in our life, and we don't know what that is. 
And sometimes it's hard to encounter God. And sometimes when you call on him, he doesn't answer. And then, you know, when you just cry out and he doesn't answer. You see what I'm saying? You know? And sometimes, like, when we're sad or when we're, you know, lonely and things like that, sometimes we want to fellowship with him, but sometimes we don't know where, how to go about things. You know, in our life. I say it's easy because what Jesus has done for us. I say it's easy because what Jesus has done for us. Okay? The Bible says this, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. It says, whosoever believes in him. When God sent his son, Jesus, to die for our sin, and when he was crucified, the veil between the Holy of Holies and the Holy Temple was torn in two. And it made those two rooms that were separate one. Amen? That we can encounter His presence and His glory whenever we want to. That's why the Bible says, whosoever. In the Old Testament, there is no way that we can approach the temple of God. Only the Levites and priests was inside the temple. And whoever foreigners, whoever outside of that, come into the temple, they can kill you. You see what I'm saying? Why? Because that place, the presence of God was there and it was holy. You see what I'm saying? So only those people who are chosen can approach God. That, that's the Old Testament. You see what I'm saying? When you read Old Testament, regular people cannot approach God. You see what I'm saying? Only like Moses, Levites, and priests, and then Samuel, and all those people. You see what I'm saying? You know? I truly believe, I really admire... Um, Samuel's mom, Hannah. He was a regular person. But he is the one. He went to the temple. And then you know what? He encountered God. We're talking about Old Testament era. You see what I'm saying? But this woman encountered God. Wow. There's a secret to that. You see what I'm saying? You know? It was hard for a woman or it was hard for an outsider to just come into the temple and then you know what? Encounter the Lord. It's impossible. You know? That's the Old Testament. Because God is holy, but we are unholy. There is no way unholy people can approach the holy God. So that's why God put a boundary in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, He opened that door. There is no more boundary. You see what I'm saying? You know? He removed that boundary. He moved that veil. You know? And now we can go. You see what I'm saying? Encounter. Encounter Jesus and encounter God. You see what I'm saying? Why? Whosoever. It doesn't matter if you're a child or old. You see what I'm saying? Whether you're American or Korean or whatever, you know? It does not matter. Male or female. It does not matter. That we can come and encounter the Lord. Why? Because Jesus has opened the door. That is why anybody can come. You see what I'm saying? Anybody can encounter the then why can't we? There's one secret, and I'm going to give you one word. You know? And this word, word, if you really do it, then you encounter it. But if it's not, then you cannot encounter it. This one word is desire. Okay? It's want. Anybody can meet God. But it's desire. It's the want that you have. Does that make sense? The Bible says this, Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for righteousness, that they shall be filled. What that means is that if you're really desiring Jesus, and then you really want to encounter Him, you can make it. Some people say, well, I desire God, but I don't meet Him, you know? I don't encounter Him. Then what is the problem here? What, what, ha what happened? This is what I want to say. I'm talking about a very strong desire. As I was, you know, fellowshipping with God and walking with God, there's one thing that I know about this character, who God is. And he is the type of person who is, he knows that he is God. You know? He knows that he can rule everything. He knows that he is worthy of praise. Amen? 
he knows that he's a valuable person. Amen? In the world. But if you treat him like he's not important. You see what I'm saying? He's not valuable. You know? Let me ask you something. If guy want to get married and then, you know, guy wants to propose a woman, he gets a diamond. Okay? How much would you pay for it? You see what I'm saying? If it's a big diamond, you have to pay a lot. You see what I'm saying? More you pay, it's more value. You see what I'm saying? The value of I want to say this, okay? That if you want to encounter God, what's it going to cost you? How much are you willing to pay? You see what I'm saying? For God. You know? How much are you willing to pay for God? To meet God. You know that. But He doesn't want your money. You, sort of, you cannot buy Him with money. You know? I'm just, you know, giving you an analogy. You see what I'm saying? You know? He doesn't want your money. But how much does it cost? How much will he, are you willing to pay? You know? To really encounter Him. You see what I'm saying? That is the key. You know? Why? Because God knows that He's important. He's the most important person in the world. Amen? In the universe. Amen? Because He's the one who created it. Amen? You know? But if you treat Him like He's not even more valuable than your friend, your family, you see what I'm saying? You know? Or your dog, <laughs> you know? You see what I'm saying? Or even worldly success. Of course, we cannot encounter. But that's how so many sometimes Christians treat him. Sorry to say. You know? Sometimes he's not even important in our family. Sometimes he's not even important in our, our you see what I'm saying, our friend. You know? Sometimes he's not even important than, you know, what we love in this world. And no wonder. If you treat him that way, no wonder you cannot encounter that. Look at Moses here. I love this because when there's a burning bush and then it did not consume that bush, you see what I'm saying? It, it, he thought that it was weird. You see what I'm saying? So he went to that place. We see a lot of that in the Bible. Sometimes Jesus, he just want to pass by. When he was walking on water, for example, what he was about to do was that he, was, he saw the boat. He saw the disciples were there. But you know what? He just wanted to pass by. You see what I'm saying? But you know what? They were afraid that because they saw that they think that they saw the ghost. You see what I'm saying? Because someone is walking on water you know, at night. You know? So they were, they were frightened. And when they were startled, Jesus recognized them and said, Do not be afraid. It is me. You know? That's what he said. There's two disciples who went to Emmaus. And Jesus was resurrected. They were sad and they were saddened by, you know, the death of Jesus. And they were just walking. You know, and then Jesus started walking in the midst of them. They didn't recognize him. You see what I'm saying? You know? And then they were walking together and they were talking and, you know, having a conversation. And then Jesus wanted to go further. But disciples, two disciples said, why don't you stay with us? You know, that desire. You see what I'm saying? They were clinging to him. And then he knew and when they were about to eat, he blessed the food, and then they recognized him and he disappeared. You know? That clean, that desire. You see what I'm saying? Stay with us a little more. You know? That's what God is asking. It's all over the Bible. You see what I'm saying? Jesus was just walking along unless somebody gives him attention. You see what I'm saying? And calls upon him and desire him. And then you know what? He pays attention to that person. That's what he does. He passes us by every day in our life. Amen? But unless you give him attention, you see what I'm saying? And a desire. He said, Lord, wouldn't you want to spend time with us? Do you see what I'm trying to say? You know? It's all over the place. Let me give you one more example. Remember Joshua? Before he 
Jericho, the first city, when they come into the land of Canaan. The commander-in-chief came as an angel of God, appeared to Joshua. You know? And when he saw that angel and that commander-in-chief, you know, he was afraid. You see what I'm saying? You know? And then he asked this question, are you for us or are you for our enemy? And you know what he said? Neither. I was very surprised by that answer. You see what I'm saying? You know? We assume that, oh, God is for us. Right? Right? As a child of God, as a Christian, we assume that, oh, of course God is for us. Of course God is for Israel. You see what I'm saying? But he didn't say that. Are you for us or are you for them? And he said, neither. You know why he said that? Unless, as a people of God, that we give him the desire. And not only that, that we are sided with him. You see what I'm saying? That we're willing to fight with him. You see what I'm saying? Then you know what? He is on the other side. He's not on the side of the world. He's not side on the Christian. You see what I'm saying? It's on neither side. He is only sided with those people who desires him. Does that make sense? You know? He only sides with those people who desire him. Don't just say that, oh, I'm a Christian. You know, God is for us. God is for me. No. If you don't commit yourself, if you don't give yourself, if you don't desire him, he's on the neither side. God is not for you. Does that make sense? And sometimes, like, we make a mistake. A lot of Christians make a mistake. They just assume, oh, God is for me. And it's all about me. Does that make sense? And we're not willing to commit. We're not willing to, willing to give our devotion. We're not willing to desire Him. And we just assume that He is always for us. You know? But when I read the Bible, God is a very different God from those people, how they think about God. From like normal Christian, how they think about God is completely different. He's the God of the Bible. Amen? You know? And we can encounter God when we put Him in the right place. When we know that God is so important. God is the most valuable person in my life. I love Him more than my family. I love Him more than anything else in this life. When we begin to understand that, then we encounter God. A lot of people think because they experience the presence of God when they come to church, they think that, oh, you know, they have faith, that they have encountered God. I want to say this to you guys, okay? There's a story in the Bible, King Saul. Remember him? After God left him because he disobeyed God, remember? And he wanted to kill David. And David hit himself with Samuel. You know, because he was afraid. So he, he wanted to become the man of God. Remember him? Saul sent his soldiers to kill David, and they sent him. And then you know what happened? Everybody started prophesying. Why? Because Samuel's anointing is so strong. The prophetic anointing is so strong that it dominated over them. You see what I'm saying? And they start prophesying. You know? And then, you know, Saul sent second soldiers, and they start prophesying. You see what I'm saying? So he got frustrated, so he himself went there. And then, you know what? He t- started taking off his clothes, and he started prophesying too. And a lot of people say, oh, this person is prophesying. Maybe this person is a good Christian. No. Sometimes people are touched by God. People experience the Holy Spirit when they gather together. You see what I'm saying? In a certain place. And there's God's just ruling is there. You see what I'm saying? So this person thinks that, oh, I encounter God. 
when this person does not live a life of devotion and commitment to the Lord. Does that make sense? You know? And they think that they're Christians. It doesn't work that way. God does not work in the crowd. Do you see what I'm saying? God works by person by person. Amen? You know? Whether it's a crowd or a person, God loves them. Amen? You have to understand that. But when we stand before God, we stand before God individually. Amen? And we are accountable for what we have done in our life before Him, individually. Not with the crowd. We need to understand that. You know? Yeah, a lot of people can encounter God through different things. But you know what? We need to encounter God personally. Amen? In our life. Then you have a personal faith in Him. You know? You don't become a believer because your friend is a believer. You don't become a believer because your parents is a believer. Amen? Faith is an individual thing. You know? God does not judge you by crowds. God judges us individually. You see what I'm saying? And we're accountable for whatever we have done. You know, individually. We need to understand that. You know? But like I said, desire. Desire is the key. Is he the most important person? You know? More than your friends? More than your family? You see what I'm saying? You know? Is he the most important person? Then of course you're going to desire him, amen? Of course you're going to desire him. Sometimes people fail. And one of the reasons for that is that they start seeking not God, but seeking success and a blessing of God. And they fail. You see what I'm saying? We need to seek God. Always, amen? And when you do that, you have everything else. This Bible says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you, amen? You know why Solomon fell? Sometimes I wonder about Solomon. You see what I'm saying? In the Bible. Because, like, he's the most wisest person, and he talked a lot about, like, adultery and things like that. You see what I'm saying? You know? And all... Talk about prostitutes and things like that too. But you know what? He violated the things that what he said written in the Bible. You see what I'm saying? He married a thousand women, you know? You know, and they're serving their gods and, you know, he started serving their God. You see what I'm saying? Rather than Jehovah God. That's why he thought. I didn't understand that. He's the wisest person. You know, he has wisdom. You see what I'm saying? Why did he fall? This is the reason why. When he was rich, when he married a thousand women, and his still wisdom was still, you know, still abandoned. He did not seek him. He did not desire him. And then he started trusting his own riches, his own wisdom. You know? That's why he came. Sometimes we seek the blessing of God, not the blesser. And there's a problem. That's when we become coming apart with His presence. You know? We need to always desire Him, to fellowship with Him, and not to encounter Him. We don't seek Him because what He could do. You see what I'm saying? But because what He is, who He is. You know, we don't seek him because, you know, what he can give to us. You know, but we seek him because he is God. He is my God. My God. Does that make sense? When you begin to have that heart, like the simplicity of that heart, you know, and you get rid of all that distraction, seeking for blessings, seeking for self-promotion, seeking for certain things. You see what I'm saying? And that's not the reason why you're seeking the Lord. But you're seeking God because He is God. That you desire Him. You'll meet Him. That is the key. He 
to me. You will encounter me. That's why so many Christians miss that. You know? And they're wondering why you know, God doesn't meet me. And you know, so I'm, saying, I'm desiring him, but why doesn't he show up? And things like that. No. When you begin to put him number one. There's sometimes so many distractions. You see what I'm saying? My heart, our hearts is divided into many different ways. You see what I'm saying? For all the things in this world and things like that, what we want and what we desire and things like that. Let me ask you, do you want Him? And I guarantee you, if you really want Him, everything comes with Him. His blessing, everything. You see what I'm saying? You know? But when we begin to miss that, that's why so many people do not encounter God. That's what I'm saying. Because He's not the only one, one desire of my heart. Remember David said, you know, there's one, only one thing that He seeks and one, he, one thing that He desires. In um, Psalm 27, that was God. And that is what David, he walked with God. He fellowship with God. He encountered God. Because he's the only thing, the only person that he wants. You know? I'm not saying that you should not seek after worldly successful things like that. You see what I'm saying? But I'm, I'm talking about he has to become number one. Amen? And once you begin to have his presence in your life, what you desire from the world, he'll help you. You see what I'm saying? He'll work with you. He will, he will give you wisdom, ideas, and power. You see what I'm saying? To able to fulfill the work that you're doing in the world. Amen? And it's a lot easier when you try to do it, you fail. But when God does it through you, He'll succeed in everything that He does. Amen? That is the key. That we need to encounter Him. First, not Him. I sometimes give this message to people and people say, but what if I don't have a you know, Sometimes like, you know, I think about God and say, you know, God is out there somewhere. You know, you see what I'm saying? You know? But you know what? Sometimes like, you know, he's not near me and sometimes, you know, I don't know whether he's near. You see what I'm saying? I don't understand his presence, you know? And what if, if I don't have a desire? You see what I'm saying? Sometimes. You know? And that could happen too. You know? I say a lot of people say we love God. Yeah, yes, right? You know? But when it comes to reality of that, do we truly love God more than anything else? You know? Then, then we need to think about it. You see what I'm saying? You know? Maybe we're deceiving ourselves, you know? Not true. Sometimes we could fall into that trap. You know? We say we love God, but how much do you love Him? Like more than anything else in your life? You know? Because if you love Him more than anything else in your life, if you desire Him more than anything else in your life, I guarantee you He will, he will encounter you. Amen? But sometimes we deceive ourselves. We say we love God. Yes. Maybe we say that out of emotion. You know? But when you say you love God, it has to be the truth. That you love Him more than anything. And you will not be seen yourself. Sometimes we say, oh, you know, sometimes like, I'm not a passionate person, okay? So sometimes, we, you know, when it comes to desire, say, if I want to, some people say, you know, I need to desire God to really encounter Him. And you know what? Sometimes I don't have a desire. I don't, I don't have that passion to desire Him. There are some people in the Bible that God met without desire. Like someone famous, like, Apostle Paul, right? And a lot of people say, oh, it's so unfair. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know? Why do people have to have a desire to meet God? No. God already knew the passion of Paul before he met him. Amen? He had a full knowledge. You see what I'm saying? He knows a person. And he knows that once he encountered God, he's going to be crazy for God. Amen? He already knew that. 
So that's why God just encountered him through grace. Amen? You know? He didn't do anything. But God met him. And then when he found that this is the truth and this is a true God, he became a most radical Christian you'll ever meet. Amen? Most radical Christian. He has such a passion to spread the gospel, it didn't stop him. He was like an energizer bunny. You see what I'm saying? You know, people were throwing stones at him, persecute him. He would not shut up. You see what I'm saying? When he falls, he stands up again and he starts preaching the gospel. And then you know what? He is the one who finished the job preaching the gospel to the end of the earth. At that time. You see what I'm saying? At that time, end of the earth was Europe. You know, end of Europe was the end of the earth. They didn't found a new land. You see what I'm saying yet? You know? He was crazy for God. He had a crazy desire for the Lord. Amen? You know? That's why God encountered him. You know? But for us, we need to have a desire. Amen? To be God. To be God. I think there's two things that God does in our life so that we can have a strong desire for Him. First is that sometimes he allows trials and suffering to come to us. Sometimes he makes our heart very barren and empty. You know? Hunger and thirst only comes when our heart's demand becomes barren and empty and dried up. And we want the what I'm saying to you. Sometimes he makes our heart that way. Sometimes you feel like you're lonely. Sometimes you have all the fun in this world. But the more you enjoy them, the more empty you are afterwards. Have you ever felt that? You know? And nothing can really satisfy. That's one way that God does it. I remember Pastor Paul, you know, how he came to God. You see what I'm saying, you know? And, you know, I heard his testimony. One time, you know, one of the TV evangelists was like, are you tired? Do you feel lonely? Are you tired of this life? And he said, yes. He agreed with every question that TV evangelist was saying, you know? And he said, no matter how much money you have, no matter how much worldly possession that you have, it will not satisfy your heart. It will not satisfy your soul. You see what I'm saying? And your heart is empty and it's barren. And God is calling you to desire. Sometimes God put us into that place when we're alone. Be careful when you're alone. You know? It can be good or bad. Really bad. Because if you try to release that loneliness through worldly means, then you're going to seek worldly things. You see what I'm saying? But at the time, if you seek God, then God becomes your friend. Amen? In a long time. You know? Sometimes people have a hard time with loneliness. You see what I'm saying? So they call up friends. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Let's go out. You know, like... But that's the best time to call upon the Lord, amen? And really spend time with God. And I guarantee you, He will fulfill your heart's desire. You're going to feel satisfied afterwards. You see what I'm saying? Because if you call up your friends and you, you eat, and you, that, that, at that time, is fine. But once that time is passed, after you come home, you feel empty. That's what loneliness is like. One thing that I realized, only God can satisfy us. Only God can satisfy us. And when it becomes barren or empty, desire, hunger and thirst after that, you'll come to be enough and satisfied. Sometimes through suffering, you know, I went through a lot of suffering. You know. It was a call of God. You know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, Pastor John, you, know, you, you pray a lot. I want to say this to you. I don't want to pray. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You know? Even though I pray every day, I don't want to pray sometimes. You know, prayer is some, sometimes so boring. 
<laughs> this is hard. You know, it's not easy, really. You know? But I pray, and I became a like sort of man of prayer. It's just because what I went through. Because God put me in a certain certain circumstances in my life that I cannot survive without prayer. See what I'm saying? You know. You know? Every way is blocked, and only way, only only thing that I can see is up. You know. <laughs> That's why I cried out. That's why I pray. Sometimes desire just comes from that. Those things. You know. When we go through, when we when we are despair, when we are disappointed, when we're discouraged, you see what I'm saying? You know, sometimes. And we begin to seek God. You know, we begin to call upon Him. That's why I always say to people, suffering and trials is not that bad. It's a prelude to your, the blessing of God, amen? It's always this. When you're lonely or discouraged or things like that, when you feel empty, you know, don't seek the things of this world. Just start seeking God. Come on. You know? He'll comfort you, you know, in your own time. Amen? That's the key. Second thing that I see is this. You know, that's what God does. That's the second thing that God does. You know, if you really want to have a desire, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. I realize that He is the one who gives us passion for God. Amen? I cannot sometimes create desire. I, sometimes I feel, like I said, sometimes I don't want to pray. You see what I'm saying? You know? Desire is a key to prayer. If you don't have a desire, you don't pray. You see what I'm saying? You know? You've got to have certain passion. You see what I'm saying? About prayer. Amen? In order to pray. You've got to have that desire. But sometimes you don't have it. You know? Sometimes you feel like, oh, I don't desire God today. You see what I'm saying? Sometimes I don't have that desire to pray. I don't have that desire to, to, you know, work for the Lord and serve the Lord and honor God. You know? That's when you have to completely rely on the Holy Spirit. Because Holy Spirit is a passion and a fire. Amen? And what happens is that He will give you desire for the things of God. You know? Desire to pray. Give you passion so that you can desire them. Amen? Rather than desiring the world. That's why the Bible says this. Follow the lust of the flesh or follow lust of the spirit. Don't follow the lust of the flesh. Amen? But follow the lust of the spirit. Lust is a desire. Amen? Holy Spirit will give you that desire. What God will desire. You know? That's why we cannot get. That's why Jesus said, I'm going to send you a helper. But sometimes we cannot create the desire on our own. Jesus said, I'm going to send you a help. He's going to help you. You know, when you live your Christian life, He's going to give you a desire. He's going to give you a desire to pray. He's going to give you a desire to read the Word of God. He's going to give you a desire to fellowship with other Christians. He's going to give you a desire to fellowship with God. Amen? You know? Sometimes He has to do it. We can't. We cannot create that desire. Holy Spirit. That's what we need to rely on. Trust Him. You know, it happens. I pray that even though we're a small number, that all of you will encounter God. You know? Personally, in your life, you will change. Your life will be so full of joy and peace, you know, that it doesn't matter what's happening in your circumstances. Amen. Once you begin to understand His presence in life, I encounter you. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you. I give you praise. I thank you so much for the message that you have given to us. Lord, we desire to encounter you. That's what we desire.